Welcome to the 320 Podcast, where we encourage you to reach for the immeasurably more life with Christ. From discussions on scripture, to poetic messages, to dreaming big with Jesus, you will enjoy a variety of episodes brought to you by Shelley Wilson Ministries. To find out more about Shelley Wilson Ministries and the many resources available to you, please visit our website at www.shellywilsonministries.org. Hey you guys, it's Shelly. Welcome to this week's 320 podcast. Um, I was sitting in the front of the building. Um, it is, today is Wednesday. I had an early morning dentist appointment and that always kind of frustrates my week. It's just, you know, things like that you got to do and it kind of sets my calendar or schedule off a little bit. But uh, when I came here, I turned on our radio station um, that plays outside the building. I guess it had cut off somehow and So there was music playing. I could feel the presence of the Lord kind of start stirring in our lobby. And I had bought, uh, we have old brick in this room on two of the walls, the bricks even on in the inside of the building. And it's it's the old brick. So there's a lot of good space in the, between the bricks and the mortar. Instead of like, you know, today the mortar is kind of flush with the bricks at times. It's not like that here, which is good for what I was about to do. I had ordered some brick hangers. I didn't want to punch holes in the wall. And um, a sweet man who was very instrumental, uh, we call him Pops around here. Um, He was instrumental in in helping us remodel um, this building. Gosh, we're in our fifth year. Can y'all believe that? We're going on year five now. Um, He... He was instrumental in just helping us get all this done, and he's so he's kind of like part of our family. He he's we adore him, and uh, for Christmas this year, he had um, surprised me one day with a picture he ordered for me. And all of you guys that are here in the building weekly, you've been enamored with it. Um, <laughs> Deanne next door in the Christian bookstore store ordered some, and and they were kind of selling like hotcakes. But it's one we see often. Uh, passed around on Facebook where uh, in a blurred background is Jesus but there's clarity of a sheep that is lost and it looks like a baby lamb and Jesus is running towards the sheep that is lost there's just one sheep and you can't see the face of Jesus you can't you can see what he's wearing but it's all blurred like it's an in action picture and um I was hanging that picture and I, I took a couple steps back. Yes, it's going to be an emotional day. I could I took a couple steps back and I just sat and stared at it, you know. It's like the Lord was beginning to remind me of his goodness. If you're in the church, you pay attention to news, you know it's been a rough couple of weeks with pastors falling like dominoes. And a lot of exposure of things that are not good in the body of people that have been left hurt. And I'll be honest with you, I I feel the weight of all that. Um, We can go back to the last podcast where I talked about the SBC vote and the plight that is really against the woman. And I've been having to spend a lot of extra time with God because... In some ways, I take it personally, right? Because I am a woman called. And the truth is, I didn't ask for this calling, but I am honored to serve him in whatever way he's designed me to serve. So there's just been a whole lot going in my heart and mind. It's the heaviness of responsibility, of uh, as a leader, as a shepherd, as someone steering people to Christ, to a holy life someone that's going to be held entirely to a higher standard of responsibility because I stand before people every week. And I guess I'm amazed and somewhat ashamed at times of the way we casually take our positions. And, you know, the scripture says, be sure your sin will find you out. And it's true. It's true. And and I'm, I've been the last maybe six months, I think I've shared with you all before, going through this exercise with God in my closet of being sure that I have forgiven those I need to forgive, being sure that I'm not operating in resentment because 
it can get hard out here, right? And I'm as human as anybody else, just like you are. And I, I told you guys in one of the meetings, I, I literally get in my closet and say, I reject every spirit of offense that would try to come and, and clothe me, right? I'm not going to carry offense. I'm not, I re reject all unforgiveness. I speak, I speak to my heart and correct. I tell it what it's going to feel, what it's going to do. Why? Because I have authority in Jesus doesn't take away the pain so all of these things have been stirring that are weighty matters and if I'm honest with you even Monday night right Monday night we ended up not doing the kind of deliverance I expected but we certainly walked through deliverance as we walked through the scriptures and we read with our own eyes many of the places in the New Testament where women are named or unnamed but they are clearly present in the upper room clearly present with Jesus clearly honored by Paul and considered a fellow disciple even in um, overseers and deacon meetings they were present called out by name and it's just we've gone you know we, we hate when people cherry pick scriptures yet we've done it right we've done it and created dom denominational slants and we've we're now opposing Jesus and, I, and it's so fascinating to me this is not the message so I'm just setting us up here that um, as a woman who feels called to shepherd and I do pastor women which is you know uh, seems to be in line with many of their theologies, but it's never enough. The devil's not satisfied until we hush, right? The devil's not satisfied that I'm shepherding women. He's not satisfied that he is only satisfied when we're destroyed. That's the way this works. And he's using a lot of people, a lot of people who profess Christ, and, and the fruit of the Spirit is not present, you know, just absolutely not present. And I tell y'all all the time, the fruit tells the truth. If you want to know if it's from God or if it's not, look at the fruit. Don't look at what they say. Look at their actions. Uh, you'll find the spirit that's in operation behind it. And, and I said to my husband, I said, do you think it was this bad when they were trying to abolish slavery? And he, slavery? And he said, I imagine so. I said, yeah, because they used Jesus' name, right? And if I were to look from through the scriptures, we will see constant slavery, which we know Jesus doesn't uh, appreciate. He is completely opposed to that. And we're even told in the very same scripture, there's no Jew or Gentile after Jesus came. There's no more slave or free. There you go, slavery. And there is no more male or female, right? You are now all one in Jesus. We're, we're all born of the Spirit, a new man. And so I happen to believe, oh, you do what you're gifted to do, not necessarily because you're a woman or a man. And so... With all that being said, I have been super sad. I mean, I, I we had a lot of hope rise Monday night when we talked about this because we, we put our own eyes on the scriptures. But many of us were in tears. Some of us were crying. And it's just the heaviness of probably the Lord. Some of the um, things that are being said about women in leadership and you know are likened to sinful matters. You know, I mean, they're comparing me with um, transgenders and all of these things. And I'm just like, wow, wow, where have we come? Where have we come? And I think some of the fall of man that we're seeing these days absolutely is undergirded by our false theology. We have devalued the woman, the way we are to engage with women, the way we are to honor women the way we present women, the way we use women, we have a problem, okay? So in light of, and you're even talking about it, I don't know if you can hear my heavy breath, it's hard for me to breathe because I've just, it's like a, a weight of grief. A weight of grief. And the Lord, uh, Monday night, I told you guys that were here, that I heard him tell me, get in the ring. Get in the ring, Shelly. Do not shrink back in this hour, but you start you start getting in the ring, reasoning the scriptures, bring in common sense where it's been lost, and all these things. And I'll be honest with you, I don't want to do it because it's like I have plenty to do. Who needs to debate, right? So with all that being said, I, when I was staring at that picture today, I could feel like the Lord was trying to 
you know, love me through the moment. The, um, the goodness of God was trying to embrace me. It's like Jesus stepping out of the picture and putting your arms, his arms around you, you know, and he's so real and alive and active and he knows every heart. And so I'm looking at that picture and God is reminding me, I am the, I am the God of the lost sheep. sheep. That is my heart. That is my nature. I run to the lost. And so I, I thought, you know what, I'm going to go pull that passage back up. Some passages we read so often or they see so, seem so simple, and, and many times they are, but we start to take for granted the simplicity of the Word, the simplicity of the heart of Jesus, the simplicity of what He wants us to know about Himself. So I want to read it with y'all, and then I feel like He's kind of given me some real-life practical moments that we've had here and that I've had with him over the years to see this parable come to life, okay? So I have a couple different Bibles open here. One is my New King James, which is my normal reading Bible, and then I have my NASB Word Study Bible so I can look up the original language. And then I have a bazillion stickers, stickies on my, because it's just my way on my desk because I want to be reminded. Um, maybe... I don't know what I'm going to call this podcast, guys. You know, there's there's the thought that when Jesus goes after the one, I kind of like that title, and maybe that's what it'll be. And I've certainly thought of many of you over these years that, that have we've been able, honored to walk the journey of pain and sorrow with, but also you coming into your place in the kingdom uh, through healing and deliverance. And, and I just... Um, I, I want to bring us back to who he is. I want to bring us back to who Jesus is. And I, I want to take my eyes off what I see happening in the body of Christ that's not good. And I want to put my eyes back on Jesus. My eyes back on Jesus. And, and hoping that by me putting my eyes back on Jesus, it also helps you put your eyes back on Jesus. So the parable of the lost sheep is in Luke chapter 15. It's short. It's not very long. But I would encourage you uh, to pull it up and read it. We've been talking about here. Um, I came a little strong Monday night when I said, listen, you can't leave here. And when people ask you questions, it's not good enough to say, well, Shelly told me or my pastor told me. That's not going to work. I, you need to be able to break open the word and say, this is what Jesus says or this is what the Lord says, the word says. All of this, You've got to know know for yourself put your very own eyes on it uh, we got in the problem we're in because we didn't do that in the beginning right so luke 15 let's read about the lost sheep it says that all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him speaking of jesus and the pharisees and scribes complained saying this man receives sinners and eats with them so he spoke this parable to them saying what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than, one, than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. So, you know, that's, there's a lot of other parables wrapped around this that kind of say the, same, the, say the same kind of thing, right? The parable of the lost son, the parable of the lost coin. Um, anyway, so... I, I just made a few notes because I, I've, I've thought, I, I've kind of honed in on that word lost. Um, what man of you having a hundred sheep if he loses one of them? Right? But it also says, when you keep reading, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost. So the first part of that I think is interesting. You lose him, Right? Which man of you having hunter sheep if he sheep sorry if he loses one of them? 
right? And then and it says, and go in in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost, right? So I, I was thinking about, well, what does lost mean? Because I'll be honest with you, I've certainly been lost as someone who didn't know Christ, right? The lost and the found, the lost and the saved, um, right? The born again and the not born again. In that way, I've certainly been lost. But I've also been lost in my walk with Jesus a time or two. Where maybe I was lost to the direction I was supposed to be going. Maybe I was lost because God shifted my friendships. Maybe I was lost because I felt like I was rejected and or um, lost because I couldn't find a place to fit in. Many of you have said that to me over the years that you just never seemed to fit in anywhere. You were lonely. In, in essence, you feel lost, right? Um, some of us who've been through rocky relationships and hard relationships, we can feel we can have a, a whole crowd around us and feel lost, right? We're just lost. We don't sometimes know what to call it. But that word lost in the original language actually uh, also says he loses. He loses. Um, lost means to be utterly destroyed, to die, to perish, to mar, to be in ruin. Um, when you look at the word to perish, there's a reference, and I had grabbed that because I wanted to make sure I understood it in Matthew 8, 25. Uh, and I, I think it's interesting because to me, it goes beyond just the saved and the unsaved. And that's what I was trying to figure out because there are other words in the original language that says, you know, you're lost to the shepherd. Well, that makes sense to us because... We know this parable, you know, talk, is really talking about the, the saved and unsaved. But I, in my heart, I was going, but Lord, does it mean even more than that? Is it, is it even in those times, in those moments in our walk with Jesus where we feel lost? We're lost to his voice. We're lost to his presence. We're lost for direction. We're lost to purpose and destiny. We have, we're lost to our own identity. Let's be honest. Some of you guys, you have been completely lost to your identity which means you're lost listen some people in the in this world are lost to whether they are male or female okay and that's the devil's work right that's not what i'm talking about right now i'm talking about you're lost to your identity in the fact that you aren't necessarily lost to Jesus. You still have your relationship with Christ. You love Jesus. You still have your um, your faith in Him, but you're lost to who He designed you to be, right? And it's because, <coughs> excuse me, it's because life happened, right? We talk about this a lot for the women who are listening, you know. Uh, we, we're in a society that kind of tells us how to be, tells us what to do and who, who we should be. They expect us to, you know, go to school, expect us to go to college, expect us to um, get married, expect us to have kids, you know what I'm saying, expect us to do this, that, and the other. And the truth is only God knows who we are, right? And, and He is the only voice who can speak into that. So some of us are just lost to who we are because a lot of other people um, and, and we've talked about this on a no telling how many of the podcasts, a lot of people have told us who we are, what to do, what we can and can't do. And so some of us are lost to our identity. But the, uh, the passage that that word perish, which comes from the word lost in the parable of the lost um, sheep, actually sends us to Matthew chapter 8, and it's verse 23. Um, this is when the disciples were in the boat, you guys. This is kind of cool. It says, now when he got into a boat, his disciples, right? They're students, they're followers of Jesus. And so his disciples followed him. I'm going to start that over. I'm butchering some of these. I'm sorry, y'all, today. I'm just, it's one of those days. Verse 23 of chapter 8, Matthew. Now when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him. 
and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with the waves but he was asleep then his disciples came to him and awoke him saying lord save us we are perishing and there is that word to perish and i kind of chuckled because i went okay lord so this can go beyond salvation right this can go i can be a lost sheep and still but i'm still a sheep you know what i'm saying i'm still a sheep because he says i know my sheep and they hear and my sheep hear my voice i'm still a sheep i can still be a sheep and still be lost so you know two things we've talked about how two things can be true this parable talks about the saved and the unsaved the the unsaved which are utterly destroyed apart from jesus which are are pronounced to a certain death correct um matter of fact one of the phrases uh in the original language says to declare that one must be put to death right so it's the the penalty of sin right the wages of sin is death so apart from christ there we are we we can be that lost sheep right but then on the other side i'm the sheep that's in the boat who's afraid right i'm the sheep that's in the boat that the winds and the storms of life have started uh, waging war and even though i know jesus is with me and even though i can quote all the scriptures and even though i can talk myself off the cliffs I still am screaming, Lord, Lord, where are you? Save me. We're perishing here. Right? So I think this parable helps all of us. All of us. I was um, I was thinking about some practical moments over my walk with the Lord. Some of these I probably addressed earlier in the podcast when I first started the podcast, when I was telling you guys a lot of stories about when Carrie and I used to be on the road singing how God would send us to do this or that the other I want to repeat a couple of those just because it bears witness with this story today um, because I, I want to I want to remind you but I'm also reminding me that we serve the Jesus of the one and it's not that he's forgotten the 99 But let me tell you what, we are all that lost sheep at some point or another and probably multiple times in our lives where we need a touch from God just for us, where I need to know Jesus sees me. I need to know he sees me. I need to know he's watching. I need, I don't want everybody else telling me. I don't, I don't. I need the wind of the spirit to drop something in my heart that's supernatural I need him to send me to the scripture that is going to stir up the hope in me again you know what I mean I need I I don't know girls and guys but I've got to have the touch of God many many days every day every day but some days more than other others so I was thinking about um a couple different instances one um, I've shared in the past is what when Carrie and I I think Karen was with us, and I don't know if Julie was with us or not, but we were headed to, I think this was our trip to Talladega. We were still doing NASCAR, and um, we were going through Mississippi to get there, and and we, you know, we love, when we travel, we love Cracker Barrels and Taco Bell. By now, everybody around here knows I'm a Taco Bell girl. Sorry for those who hate it. It just is what it is. Um, but Cracker Barrel, I love home cooking too because I don't do it, right? So if, if anybody's home cooking, you know, make me something. But so Cracker Barrel it was. And at the time, Carrie had found for me, her and Randy, these, these awesome feather necklaces from Sam Moon. And I was able to, to resell those, which helped us with, you know, if we went places back then and sold those, it would help with our gas and <laughs> that's kind of the way you survive on the road you know what I mean but it was like God had put this special anointing on that necklace it was a feather necklace it went with my second album uh, of Psalm 91 for he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall find refuge and it was beautiful it had rhinestones in it I couldn't keep them you know so I so we would wear them all the time but we knew that we were probably going to have to give it away and i used to teach little girls when we had drama queens that listen you can have this necklace but i'm telling you right now if god calls you to give it to somebody you better be willing to give it up and that's how we taught 
little girls to be givers, you know, to never hold things too, too tight, to always be willing to give, to give when Jesus calls you to give. And um, so we were in Mississippi at a Cracker Barrel. And there, we're at the table getting ready to order. There is this beautiful uh, African-American woman. And oh my gosh, she just caught my attention right away. Um, I didn't know in the moment Jesus was taking my eyes and he was controlling my eyes. So I, I started watching this woman because she looked sad. And this happens to me a lot when I'm out and about. She looked so sad when she was waiting these tables. And, and I, I intuitively reached up to grab my feather necklace. I knew in that moment she needed it, and I did not have one on. So I look at Carrie, and I said, she had her necklace on. I said, Carrie, I need your necklace. I think, I think Carrie, she's going to be listening to this podcast later. I think in that moment, Carrie said, no. And that, <laughs> then I said, no, I've got to give it to this lady. So Carrie gave me her necklace. And the way the ladies, my heartbeat is is racing because I know God is saying this is an assignment for you. So I, I, the woman is waiting on a table. I couldn't stand it any longer. I got up to go to her, interrupted her at the table, and I said, "Ma'am, God has sent me over here to give this necklace to you and to tell you that Psalm ninety one four says He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings." You will find refuge. And she's just, the whole table was silent. Everybody was staring. And she went, how did you know? And I, and tears were just in her eyes. And I said, I didn't, but Jesus does. And I said, we're over here. So she came, she finished what she was doing. She came by the table and she started sharing with us how she was really being bullied at work. And, people, and the other staff members were making fun of her. She had an injury in one of her hands and arms, and it was very painful to her, for her to waitress and have to carry things, and everybody was making fun of her. So we went outside and made her uh, what today I would call love letter bags. We were doing this even then and gave her pretty much anything that we could think of to encourage her. That day, oh gosh, That day, God went for a lost sheep. It's not that she was lost to Jesus. He just wanted her to know, honey, you're not lost to me. None of this situation is lost to me. I see everything that's happening to you. I see all the pain you're going through. And here he is. He loved that lost woman who felt so lost so much that he takes a group of girls from Texas through the right place in Mississippi and right at the right Cracker Barrel uh, on their way to minister at another event and that's one one of those her name actually was Dallas we went through there several years late or maybe it wasn't it might have been the next year because we were doing a lot of traveling then um, she actually had been promoted so she was no longer having to work with those people y'all God gave her favor and he gave her a double honor for all her dishonor and she was in management now over multiple stores look at look at jesus look at jesus dropping into a cracker barrel so that's one of the most precious moments you know the other would be um the time that jan and i were headed to do a radio show at hle radio in in louisiana uh, with our good friend hunter logan (laughs) And on the way, we end up on the a road we shouldn't have been in at at a, at a McDonald's because we needed a restroom break. And I've shared this one before too, where I stepped inside and I turned to the right, and there's one of uh, the the women workers sitting at the table, wiping uh, just hordes of tears away. And that day, we ended up putting her in our car, taking her to Walmart. She had lost her mother. It was Christmas time. She had no Christmas. They all lived together. A house full of kids, I guess, extended family together. She was in grief. She had just gotten that job. She had no car. Um, I had to go up to her step. I, I went up to Jan. I said, I had gone to the bathroom and said, Lord, is this an assignment? 
and uh, Jan already knew, you know, so I go to Jan, I said, listen, we're fixing to take this woman. God provided a Walmart right across the street. Or I can't remember if it was Walmart or Super One, one of the two. We went and got her gift cards, had her go fill her buggy up with groceries, got her gift cards for her kids, and, and then we took her to a place we didn't know where it was, where she lived, and we were able to pray with that whole family. You know, and I and I go, and that's this is the Jesus that we serve, that he took a couple of women. You know, I had to call the radio station. I think I shared this a few week, few podcasts ago and say, listen, I'm not going to make it today. We'll do it. We'll, so we'll do it later. We'll do it. Whenever I get there, we'll do the show. But I knew, and we were able to share it on the show, what God had done, um, because I could have been... I could have, we could have been somebody that thought that radio show, that radio interview was more important than the woman, but God sent us, he let us do both. You see what I'm saying? I didn't have to miss out on either. I didn't have to make a choice. I just had to be flexible. And God saw that sweet lost sheep, you know, who had just lost her mom, had only, had just had a job, had not received her first paycheck, didn't have food for the family, didn't have Christmas gifts for her kid, and God knew he could send a couple women from Texas to the wrong road in Louisiana to a walk, to a, a McDonald's they should have never been at, and that we wouldn't just walk by her, but that we would put our faith to work. You know? the one who goes after the one. And then I think of, which I've shared recently, um, and even in writing, probably on the podcast a few times ago where I just left Teague, Texas, I had placed the only album I had left in print in one bag. And it was specifically for one woman who needed to hear one song who after we left got up and testified to her church and I think of look at God sending a woman two and a half hours away to minister at that church to bring the only CD she had I had to be willing to give that away when she touched it she felt the presence of the Lord and then she was able to testify in front of her whole church at what God was doing in her life and here we again see see Christ in action as he goes after the one. I was thinking too recently a story you don't know about. I had been on my way home actually from one of our meetings in the last, it might have been last week. Let me see. I think I have a date on this. So this was the 13th. So today's only the 19th. And I start hearing a poem forming in my mind and I'm I'm thinking and it's it's late we know our meetings run late and I wasn't gonna pull over and and I kind of forgot about it but then the next morning the poem came just started up again like like I had never lost it like it had just was the first time I was hearing it and I knew exactly who the poem was for it was for a sister who uh, has a uh, who is a a prophet, I believe, um, and who who is launching out into her season with the Lord, and God is preparing her to build, um, to release her voice, to train other people. Um, I've only met her twice, you understand, so we don't know each other all that well. We just have a mutual respect, and um, I, and I'm I'm. I'm uh, uh, listen, God could give me, y'all know I'm a prolific writer with the Lord. He can give me anything at any time. But in this moment, he wanted to to give me a poem for her. So here is Jesus going after the one. Going after the one to remind her of what's being said in this poem. So I'm gonna, I don't want to tell you who it is because it's kind of a private issue. But um, it's one of those things that's just between her and the Lord, and I just happened to be the messenger, but it says there will be days. That was the first thing I heard when I started getting the poem, and it says there will be days of loneliness and days of aloneness, 
days of sorrow and days of joy. There will be days of victories and days of loss. Keep your eyes fixed on the cross. There will be days of rains and days of fires, days of warring with many liars, days of peace and days of rest, days of many, many tests. But in the training, your growing strength, keep your posture on bended knee, for Christ is faithful to leadeth thee, no matter what each day may bring. You know, so here we are. Not that, that she's necessarily lost, but, but I will say this. The more seasons you walk through with Jesus, sometimes the, the harder the battles, the, the heavier the weight, um, because he's advancing you, right? Even when they came into the promised land, they had to evict the giants that were already on the land. There were still battles. God didn't just hand them over the promised land and say, here you go, you know, sit on your couch and eat bonbons. That's, this is not what the scriptures say. They go and have to get rid of the giants that are in the land God has given them. Okay, and it's, it's the same principle today that, that we often think, oh my gosh, thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm in my promised land, in my field. I'm in the vineyard that you birthed me for. And then we think it's going to be like this bed of roses. And we forgot the roses have thorns, right? We forget that there are yet new level is a higher devil, devils. We certainly have seen that around here. And God was just putting his eyes on her so in advance so that she would remember because she told me she was going to print it out and hang it in her office so that when the days come and they will come where she does feel lost where she's not sure what to do she's not sure of what blueprint to use she doesn't know whether to go left or right you know what i'm saying uh maybe when she's persecuted by people when she loses friends when because we all go through this all right jesus did we will this was God going after the one, right? He could have given me a poem for everybody. Anybody, everybody, all at once. But he had her on his heart and mind that morning. Jesus was going to show himself to the one, okay? To the one. And she was the one that morning. Now, clearly that poem can minister to many of us, but that poem was specifically written for her. God can touch many people at many times, and we've seen that in our rooms where God may speak a specific word as I'm praying over somebody, but that same word bears witness with many others in the room. So God, the Holy Spirit of God, who can be everywhere at all times, uh, is doing a multiplied work in that moment. This is the Lord that we serve. I think of the woman at the well, which we've talked about so often around here, of how God went for the one woman. The woman who was lost. She was lost, lonely, um, ostracized, rejected by people and men, you know, misunderstood misused abused likely um and i and i have never gotten over the fact that he cleared the room for her he made his disciples leave and i we we've done a teaching here where i said don't you know that was on purpose because they they couldn't see the see when you when you have a certain cultural mindset uh and i'll go as far as saying denominational bent uh, theological raising if your eyesight, if you see through the lens that is different than Jesus, you won't be able to understand the Christ who sits with sinners and eats with them. You won't be able to understand like they were like amazed that he was talking to a woman, it says. Right? Why was it so amazing he was talking to a woman? Because you didn't do that then. And the fact that she was from Samaria, you didn't do that. Jesus Jesus went for the one, and he didn't care where she was from. He knew exactly who she was, where she was from. He formed her in the womb. He knew what was in her. 
and he was coming to be her bridegroom, the one that would never leave. And I've never gotten over the fact that we missed it. He cleared the room for that one woman. He wanted it to be just her, her and him. No other voices, no other influence, no other eyes looking on, no other little ears hearing everything he was saying. This was an intimate moment between him and her. And that is the Jesus that goes after the lost sheep. That is the goodness of the Lord that I know. God has this incredible way of making you feel like He moved heaven and earth for you. Because honestly, He does. I was thinking about one of you girls where actually two situations we've had and we've I've briefly shared on here one was when God moved on one lady to prepare gifts for another lady and uh, you don't even know you don't even know right and God instructs this woman everything to put in that gift and and then when our other lady opens it it's it's every thing that she that would have only God could speak into and in that moment she saw El Royi, the God who sees me right in that moment Jesus goes after the one that feels lost the one that feels lost in life the one that feels lost to purpose the one that feels just lost you know and then I think of of just in how all that's orchestrated you know there are a million pieces to the puzzle that God moves and shifts to go after the one the one I think of the times here this happened a lot when we were uh, first opening and we just learned you know if you're all about numbers you'll never get it when God clears your room for one person you'll think something's wrong We've understood that there have been moments that God kept everybody home but this one person because that one person needed our undivided attention and that one person needed the safe place of, of nobody but me and Jan or that or just me or what who at whatever group that was in and and Jesus who goes after the one keeps everybody at home. You understand? It's just a stunning, stunning to watch him move his hand in the many various ways he does. I think of little things. I have some notes here. I think of uh, the littlest of things where my Aunt Sonia is, is giving me old Christmas things, things that nobody wants. I can I can use those things here in our love letters by mail, so a lot of that I'm happy to take. But there was this one tray, and on the bottom of the tray, it had these multiple horses in, in like this. Uh, and it was in their horseshoes for the handles of the tray, so it was like a serving tray. And I knew immediately when I touched that thing that that was for uh, Paula Tunnel, who you know, loves horses, you know, teaches riding, she does training, and has a dream that I happen to know between her and the Lord, and I knew that at that moment it was for her, and I, I've thought about that. You guys, you got to stop thinking everything's a coincidence, and understand that God orchestrates the, the uh, sorry, orchestrates the steps of the righteous. My Aunt Sonia had to be getting rid of that thing. I had to go over and take it. And listen, it had been offered to everybody in my family, right? So I'm like, I'll come over there and look through it. I grab that tray, and then I, I have to, because I'm the one where Paula comes here uh, for our equipped group, right? So it's like, you know, look at Jesus. He's always trying to minister to the one to remind the one to 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 show himself to the one in in the language that they understand it's i mean it's just amazing it's just amazing i think of i didn't i don't even know if i told you guys this 
Um, when we did the event in Big Sandy uh, with uh, the girls at the gathering and the Kingdom Creatives, um, Jesse did a beautiful dance, uh, interpretive dance, um, and, sh and it was about how God bottles our tears, and she had a, ma a huge mason jar filled with water, and at the end of that, she puts a bouquet of flowers in it, and it is representing how God, it, it's the reaping of this, it's the sowing of tears that becomes reaping of joy, right? It's the restoration. It's how the tears grow flowers, right? It's the harvest from the, the rainy season, the tearful season. And at the end of that dance, she comes and presents that to me as part of her ending. And if I didn't know Jesus better than I do now, I would go, oh, well, that's nice. But you see, I have a track record with him, and I know he does everything on purpose. And when he speaks, I'm going to stand up straight and listen. And I knew right then that through what she was doing, God was finally, I say finally, saying, baby, this is the season where all the sowing and tears will now reap a harvest you know, and we've seen that the last four years, but it was him reminding me, him reminding me of that it isn't over. There's going to be more harvest. There's going to be more flowers in the field. There's going to be more land that, uh, and, and look, look now what's happened. Look now what the wilderness has produced. Look around at all the lovely wild flowers that you get to serve and how, how I grew them to be so uniquely made and clothed in such unique beauty. Their voices are different. The way they express Jesus are, are, is different and unique. Um, you know what I mean? And, and I knew that that was God using Jesse to hand me proof. And I have kept that jar. I've kept those flowers, and they are in my bedroom in a in a um, armoire that I have, as a reminder to me that that day there was a lot of women there that day that were ministered to. But in that moment, he came for Shelley Wilson. In that moment, right there, he handed me what he had promised me. You see what I'm saying? Jesus goes to the one. And I can certainly say I was lost in a season. I, I was lost in a season, lost to a lot of things. But, but it, just like he found me when I was lost uh, and not saved, he found me when I, after I was saved, but lost in the valley, lost in the wilderness, lost in loneliness, lost in pain. He came for me there. I was thinking about one of our precious ladies that that the devil really robbed her of her a lot of her childhood and how her relationship with Jesus has been so beautiful to watch the childlike faith that God wants us all to have with him and to not let the world taint that precious faith in us and I've We've watched God give her sweet dolls that she never could have when she was a child. Give her, um, you know, books and things that she had hoped and dreamed for. But, but, but it was robbed for, from her when she was younger. And, and now, later in life, God is restoring her childhood to her. And, and I go, look, there, there is God again going for the lost sheep. Not lost to salvation, but but lost lost in lack of of not being able to experience some some of what we would say are normal childhood memories, normal childhood moments, childhood birthdays, childhood Christmases, childhood gifts, where the devil has come and, and some of us um, many of us, many women, one out of four now, have gone through such an abuse where we didn't even get to be children when we were younger. You know? And, and look at Jesus. He didn't overlook all of those things. 
He's, you know, restored to her the dolls she could never have. How beautiful is that? That that is the goodness of God I am trying to focus on today. To remind myself he is faithful in every season. He is who he, who he says he is. And no matter what the circumstance in the church, no matter how many times they want to come at me and tell me to be silent as a woman, that he died for this lost sheep. And that he didn't die for this lost sheep just to live a natural life, but he died so I could live a supernatural life. And he died so that I, he could live through me as part of his body, right? So I'm, I'm hoping, and I'll tell you what, I love that Jesus, let's see, where it says, I'm going to read verse 5, and when he found it, talking about the lost sheep, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And you think about that, how sometimes with our kids or our grandkids, we put them on our shoulders, right? We may toss them on our shoulder and wrestle with them. Or like uh, my son-in-law always puts my little peanut on his shoulders to walk around. It makes me so nervous because he's so tall. But she loves it, you know. And I'm like, look, we, we see the picture of the good father right here who takes the lost sheep and he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. Rejoicing. And today, I think I'm just, God wants to remind us, no matter what, that is who he is. No matter what, that is who he is. He is the good shepherd. He is the good shepherd. No matter where you, th where you think uh, you're lost, whatever you think has been lost to you, whatever you've lost in this world, you know, some of us were raised to feel like losers, right? Jesus says, no, the devil is a liar. And um, you are mine. And you're a masterpiece. Fearfully and wonderfully made. He's fully into you. You know what I'm saying? He is fully for you. Not against you. So, Lord, I'm just going to thank you, God, that you can reach into a heavy season where it seems like utter darkness within your church and remind us of the light of Christ, the shepherd who goes after the lost sheep, the, the one willing to leave the 99 and go get the one who has strayed. Go get the one who went in the wrong direction. Go get the one who stopped fighting because they've been abused too much and they can't do it anymore. You just come get us. When we've taken the wrong turn, God, you're still the, sh the shepherd who comes after the lost sheep. When I'm on the wrong road, God, you know how to find me. When I've made the poor choices, you still know how to find me. Not only do you know how to find me, you are going to come after me. I thank you, Lord, that your word says when we call on your name, you know, we shall be saved. If, we're, if, we're, if we don't know you, if we've not been born again, I can call on the name of Jesus and be saved. I thank you, Lord, for that gift that when we are born again, we are made to be new creations. And then I thank God that as we walk with you and we talk with you and we go through daily struggles, some hard seasons, some, some easy seasons, some sunshiny seasons, some rainy seasons, that you are still and forevermore the shepherd that comes after the lost sheep. I thank you, Lord, that in the midst of darkness, you are brighter, your light shines brighter, and I ask you, God, to help us continue shining brightly and that, God, as the darkness progresses, that we also advance. That while it seems like the kingdom of darkness progresses and advances, we are called to push back and advance. Lord, I ask you to give us the boldest we need in this season, knowing that you are good. When I know you're good, I can trust you in all things. Father, where some, some of the listeners may not quite, maybe they're not sure whether you're good. Maybe that's a question. Are you really good all the time? 
Are you really good all the time? Maybe there's some things in their hearts, God, that you just need to have that honest cry with the Lord and, and just say everything you need to say so the light of Jesus can shine on it and do something amazing. I thank you, Lord, that intimacy is born. Intimacy is born. Oh, the best in the valley seasons, God. Not just when we're getting from you all the time. Just Not just when we seem to have blessings flowing like milk and honey. But no, it's when I'm in the wilderness and I am isolated alone in a dark cave that Jesus, you find us still. That when we got there, you were already there. You already had the plan worked out. You already had the reroute in place. And that all things would then work together for our good. Lord, I'm asking just for an encounter for each of us in, an, in a fresh way with you. You know what every heart needs to hear and how they need to hear it. We're all so different as your children. It's just like my own children, my daughter and my son, both in two entirely different, not just in gender, but the way they do things, the way they respond to certain things, the way they hear things, the way they deliver things. All of your children are the same way, but you know each one perfectly. I thank you, Lord, you don't let us stay in despair. I thank you that you're good to put my put my eyes on that precious picture that pops gave me i thank you god that even back then you knew that this day on this day i was going to need to ponder that picture and see you once again freshly and who you really are not who the world and the pharisees and the church and the religious leaders of our day are trying to tell me you who you are but that you the spirit of the living god jesus you will tell us and remind us who you are. And today, you're just reminding us that you are the one that comes after the lost sheep. And for that, I'm grateful, God, because we've all been the lost sheep a time or two or three or four. Thank you for who you are, for your faithfulness, God. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, sweet friends. Be encouraged this week, no matter what you see. He's on his post. He knows what he's doing. He's got you in his mind, in his heart. You're never forgotten. You're never forsaken. He's not missing a thing you're going through. All right? And I'll catch you next week. We hope today's episode has blessed you and encouraged you to pursue Christ passionately. To join us again for more encouragement, equipping, and empowering, subscribe to the 320 Podcast. We would also like to invite you to enjoy our round-the-clock radio station, Royalty For Real Radio for Women, at royaltyforreal.com. That's royalty, the number four, real.com.